Some recent changes to the SharePoint Lookbook resource um, of Microsoft has made some community people a little bit upset. And, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that, but I did decide to become part of the solution and not the problem by putting some resources out there to help the people. Now the SharePoint Lookbook, you can see the URL there at the top, used to be a tool um, that you could use to go and look at different templates um, and ideas to be inspired. So you can go and look at a specific site and then look at the site and go, oh, that's pretty cool. I wonder what that is. And it would then have a list of the web parts on the left with a click through link that takes you to the resource. That is no longer available. And I'm pretty sure Microsoft has their own good reasons. But but it is nice to use it as a learning tool as well, not just to deploy the templates, but also as a learning tool. So being able to go here and say, oh, I want to look at this organization home and I can look at that page and go, oh, that's a pretty cool idea. See how nice that looks. And then to find out what web parts and how those web parts are actually built. So the resources aren't available anymore, but the templates are still available. Now, that kind of brings me to my next statement, is that not everyone has SharePoint or Global Admin. So in your SharePoint um, home site, you can actually go and say, create a site there in the back, and then choose, let's say, communication site, and then you can say, oh, I want to build this template. Yeah, that looks cool, and then use the template. But it's not that we always want to build um, the site. Sometimes we just want to be inspired by it. So let me help and try my best, my utter best, to get you inspired. But I'm going to unpack each of those templates over the next couple of blogs um, and explain to you the web parts that was used to build those. So let's take a look. This is the SharePoint Lookbook, the organization home template. So if I go to the site here, you can see it's this template. I've already deployed it and I'm going to take each page that was built and unpack the page for you. So let's put this into uh, edit mode. The graphic that you see there on the left hand side is a Euro web part. So even I was surprised. I didn't think it was a Euro web part. What's important to take note of these pages as well is that they are divided up in sections. So on the left hand side, you can see you can add new sections. And we normally use that to structure the web parts different. This is three columns. Or to change the background colors, you can see that this one's background color has been changed and this one's background color has been changed. So if I look at this, this is a Euro web part. Firstly, the little buttons on the left shows you how to edit the section. So do you want to change the layout of the section? This is a one column. And if I click on the web part, it tells me that it's a Euro web part and it's been set to tiles. It's a single tile. And um, of course, there is if I click on the specific image, it's also got a link that it clicks through to and it's got a background image that's been set up to be used. So it's got a background image that was loaded and there's a URL that it can click through to. But it is set to tiles and it's set to one tile. You can also set this in layers. Layers kind of staggers it, which is pretty cool. But this one specifically is set to a tile and it is a Euro web part. The next web part that you see there is a news web part. Now in news web parts, you can bring in links from external resources. This is a link from an external resources. And you can also build your own news web parts. Let me um, restate that. <laughs> you can build your own news pages. So if you go to my blog and you go search for SharePoint News, you will find loads of articles that shows you how to build those. In this example, I've just pulled an external news article um, to display on the page. That's news. And if you look at the web part, it is set to side by side and it only allows to show four. And there's some modifications you can do here as well. You can also filter these web parts. I use that quite often to show specific news in specific places like top news or featured news or historical news. And you can filter it as well by using page properties and uh, filtering on the specific page. These two web parts are placed in one section, by the way. You'll see that um, if I had to change this, it will affect both the web parts. See there? Because it's in one section. The next section, a new section has been brought in, and that is to allow them to change the background color. 
So they're using that background color and this is based on the theme that's been used on your site. So of course if you go change the look you can change the theme on the site. Also again on my blog there is um, a nice blog about custom themes for SharePoint. So bringing in your own um, look for uh, SharePoint themes and not to just use the colors that they have. But this currently is using um, the colors that they have. So there we go, current uh, selection. So going back to the page, let me just close that. The web part that's used here is a Quick Links web part. So let's just modify that and it's set to be compact. Quick Links are incredibly versatile web parts. And again, I've done a blog that shows you many ways to do that. Here you go, quick tips with Quick Links in SharePoint Online. I've uh, gone and unpacked a lot of those different layouts. So if I look at this Quick Links, if I had to change it to form strip, it will do that. Grid will look like that. Buttons, list, and tiles. This one specifically is set to compact. And you'll see that the more of them you add, the more it will keep on wrapping. So at the moment, if I publish the page, it's showing four and it wraps a fifth one below it. The web part below that is an interesting one. So um, on the example, actually, they have them in one area. I just want to bring the web parts up. They have them in one section underneath each other. You have to be careful with that, though. If some of your graphics are much higher than the others, it will actually show that it's not straight. So to overcome that, I normally do two sections and I add the graphics below each other so that the tops of the new section aligns perfectly. Now the example as well on the site, um, they are using something called text layovers. So these are images that's added. And if you look at the specific, so, oh, I just did it. Let me just see if I can get it to duplicate that again. There we go. See that office facilities? For some reason, it's not always showing on my site at the moment. So what I did is um, I did a little trick. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to switch off the text layover. And all I did is that I, in PowerPoint, actually went and created that little graphic from scratch. So there you can see I just went and took the photo. I took a little shape. I changed uh, the shape layout and I made it slightly transparent. And I then used that as a graphic together. So because the text layovers weren't working that great at the moment. Should, but it's not for some odd reason, that text over image. So I just brought it in with my image. But these are actually images that are added. So it's the image web part and you can add URLs behind them. So there, if I click on add web parts, you'll see there is the image web part. Then below that um, is Viva Engage that they added. So again, let's take a look at the page. There at the bottom, you can see Viva Engage. And Viva Engage, you can actually set up to go and fetch stuff from your community that set up. So you can set it to highlights or to feeds, and you can set it to a topic, etc. So pretty cool little web part to create engagement on your pages. Then on the right hand side, this is a world clock. The world clock allows you to bring in different time zones. You'll see I brought South Africa in there. So you can simply just uh, type a new um, location. And um, I don't even know where half of these places are. Hmm. Interesting. Never heard of it. But apparently they're on our same time zone. Um, so you can actually go set that up and you can edit the web part as well to show different settings. So that's quite nice time zones. This is a countdown timer. So you can set a date and time. You can set some settings there. You can even put a call to action on. So like click here to register for the event. You can bring a background image in and you can set opacity on that background image, which is pretty cool. Looks quite sexy. The next web part that you see there is upcoming events. So that works off the calendar of your site. So you can add events there. The calendar events can also have categories. So you can put categories in there. It says birthdays, corporate events, and then you can filter it to only show specific events here. And then the web, so a web part that you see here is frequent sites. Okay, So that will show any sites that I've recently worked with, which uh, is a pretty cool way for the user to very quickly access other sites they work with as well. So that is just the home page very quickly unpacked. 
Let's take a look at the other three pages. This is a page where they've not used the header banner. So this is just a plain header at the top. This is text. This is a file web part, so file um, and videos. You can use that there, and you can then surface videos. This is text. This is actually a graphic. I did not know that. So um, let me just show that to you. So what they've done is that they've added a little graphic there. And um, interesting thought process behind it, because on the site, you also have something called a divider that you can add. You'll see there's the divider. And I can modify the thickness of it and the length of it. So I'm surprised they wanted something a little bit shorter, apparently. And you can also put that into another section, of course. And you can see there, I could nearly replicate that. But obviously, they wanted something a bit darker. And they actually brought it in as a graphic, which is interesting. So let me just delete those sections. That is a little graphic, but you can do it with a divider. This, again, is a um, image. And it's using text over image again, which I'm telling you doesn't always work lately. I'm not sure. Text, text, text with URL. Um, again, graphics with uh, text over images. This, again, new section added. They've changed the background color of the section. These are icons that are brought in as images. Okay, So you can't bring icons like that in that big if it's not an image. So this was just a normal image that was added. And again, me and PowerPoint, I can actually create my own images in PowerPoint. So if you go to Insert and you go to Icons, you can go and pick an icon. Um, change the color of the icon, save it as a PNG, and you can actually insert it to do something really cool like this. This is text. Again, text web part. Text set it as a header. Again, little graphic. Interesting. Image that was brought in. This is all text that's just formatted differently. Text with a URL over it. Another way of doing that, of course, is to actually do a button. So a button also looks quite nice. So if I had to use that, uh, what is that? Learn about our priorities. And of course, you can then um, just bring a URL in as well. So that also looks quite nice versus not doing that, if it makes sense. But they actually did it as a link. Again, this is text formatted differently. There's a link again. This is a graphic, graphic, text. Um, now, that Yero web part does very similar to this, by the way. So the Yero web part, um, if I had to bring that in, and I use the layers, so have a look there, image, text, with link, text. So I would rather have done this with a Yero web part. So it's interesting that it was built that way. Again, so many different ways of doing these things. Then let's take a look at the other pages. Uh, what's happening? Again, also plain header at the top. This is text. This is a file web part. This is an events web part, upcoming events. These are quick links. So let me show you. Quick links set as film strips. So compact would look like that. Film strips, grid, tiles, list, buttons. But it's set as a form strip. And of course, you can just add a new link by, uh, and let's see, uh, I'm going to just auto select an image or a custom image. Let's see if I've got images I can grab from the site. Let's see if there's site images that I can use. Um, I'll just use one of those as an example. So that is quick links, of course. And then um, text, text, quick link, quick link, same as that. It's just set to form strip, but there's only one. This is a very cool web part of call to action. So a call to action uses a background image and text that goes over it and a URL that you can put in. And you can then also state where you want the alignment to be. The nice thing about this is that it's quite responsive. So if I had to drag this into a smaller column, you'll see it actually then um, displays differently. Then the um, page here, this is text set as a heading. 
quick links again sets us grid and that's it on that page let's take a look at resources on the resources page these are quick links set as buttons this is a yarrow web part three blocks again quick links this is also quick links just set a little bit differently a yarrow web part again quick links and a call to action so let's quickly take a look there so keep in mind yarrow web part this one is tiles and this one is set as three tiles this is quick links set as a list quick links again set as compact you'll see that it displays slightly different if I had to change this to list you'll see that's what it looks like I prefer using these I must say but it depends on what you want to achieve then Euro web part again um, these are also just uh, quick links and this is a call to action that is just um, quite a nice graphic there and again just to show you if I have to drag that into that zone it actually makes it a smaller call to action so important to know we did a very quick run through of the web parts that's used remember that they use different sections to create different background colors so if I had to add a section here I can then modify this section to be different colors now Microsoft has brought out a lot of new cool things and even custom backgrounds I'll cover that in another blog but that allows me to also change the layout and um, also change what web parts and how they display on the page so think of these nearly like um, a table in Word that allows you to put content in different places and align it um, differently and then just the top of the page you'll see it's set to plain if I had to set that to image and title I could actually bring a banner in so let's quickly upload a banner um, I'll just use that so I can bring a banner in as well um, I, I'm not a very big fan of plain tops but I must say on these pages it's looking quite nice there's color blocks as well um, let's just align it left it's overlapping as well but this specific one was set to plain and that is a very quick run through of the specific template and the web part that was used to build it looks quite sexy I must say so kudos to the SharePoint team I can see I've totally broken this web part kudos to the SharePoint team um, for putting some nice templates out there I'll uh, catch you on the next one. We'll uh, see. Let's take a look quickly which is the next one that we'll uh, unpack. So on the SharePoint lookbook, I think the next one I'd like to cover. Um, let's quickly see. <laughs> uh, let's look at crisis management. Also quite a nice one. I think I'll do the crisis management one next. So uh, catch you soon.